Hi everyone, this is Chris. Welcome back to part two of our tutorial on creating a contour map. Where we last left off, we had created a landscape grid and recorded elevations in relation to each grid square. With these grid points logged in our leveling notes, it's now time to plot these elevations in our grid and translate them into contour lines via the process of interpolation. Before we get into interpolation though, let's take a quick look at our grid elevations and how they transfer to points on a page. Using an engineer's scale on 5x5 five five graph paper, I've recreated our 50-foot grid squares as we laid them out in the field. Now it's worth noting that to obtain a more precise contour map that allows for more accurate plotting of the various elevations, you can certainly decrease the scale to something like 30 to 1, which would still fit on an 8.5 by 11 page, or something like 10 to 1 or even smaller, providing a larger sheet has the space. For the purposes of learning today, however, I'll be using 50 to 1 scale, as 1 inch of space will equal 50 feet and fit neatly within the graph paper's 5 by 5, 1 inch dimensions. Another important point is the elevations we're currently looking at from our leveling notes are recorded to the 100th of an inch. For the purposes of plotting contour lines, we will not need to be this precise. So, all measurements on your grid can be rounded to the nearest tenth instead. Looking at the grid points and their respective elevations, the process of interpolation begins with the understanding that contour lines must rest on whole numbers according to a contour interval. In our case, since we're working with a relatively small dimension of space at roughly one acre with a gentle slope, the contour interval will be one foot between each contour line. As a result, our goal will be to reveal where each whole foot contour line rests along each horizontal and vertical line for each grid. To start, we'll look at the first grid square on the upper left and the two elevations taken on its upper corners. Seeing that we have one elevation at 92.3 feet and another at 91.5 feet to its right, we can tell that there is a descending slope in that direction. Knowing that we also have to locate a whole foot contour point between 92.3 feet and 91.5 feet, the first whole number between those two measurements will be 92 feet. In order to reveal where this 92 foot mark rests on this horizontal line, the process of graphic interpolation will require us to divide the line into equal divisions or units. To do this, we'll simply subtract the higher elevation of 92.3 feet by the lower elevation of 91.5 feet. With the difference between the two being 0 0.8 feet, all we have to do is move the decimal place over one space to the right, essentially multiplying it by 10. And what's revealed to us is the number of equally spaced units we'll have to divide the line into. To find these equally spaced units, we'll use either our engineer or architect scale depending on which provides the amount of units needed. In this case, since our grid is laid out in 1 inch by 1 inch grid squares, our architect scale provides a quick solution as it comes with a standard 1 8 inch to 1 inch scale. With this scale already divided equally into 8 parts per inch, we simply lay it along our horizontal line and mark each space accordingly. With the line now divided into eight equal parts, all we need to do now is figure out on which one the 92 foot point rests. To do this, we'll once again take our elevation measurement of 92.3 feet and subtract the desired contour point we wish to reach. 
having subtracted 92.0 feet from 92.3 feet, we see the difference of 0.3 feet remaining. At this point, just as we did before, we'll simply move our decimal place over one space to the right. And what we are left with is the amount of units we need to count in order to reach our desired whole number of 92 feet along the line. This is one of two ways we can reach this point, as we could have also counted up from our other elevation point of 91.5 feet. In this case, we would reverse the operation performed, since we're counting up towards our desired whole number of 92 feet instead of down to it. In this way, we would subtract 91.5 feet from 92.0 feet and come up with 0.5 feet remaining. Then, just as before, by moving our decimal place one space to the right, we are given the amount of units we need to count in order to reach the desired 92-foot contour point. Now that we have our location for the 92-foot contour line on the horizontal of the grid, we'll attempt to find the same point on the vertical as well, so we can connect the dots and draw on our first line. The good news is that the mathematical process for obtaining this point vertically is the same as it was horizontally. After identifying the two elevation points on the segment of line in question, we go back to our 92.3 foot mark and subtract 88.8 .8 feet. This produces an answer of 3.5 remaining feet, which, after moving the decimal over one space to the right, reveals that we'll need 35 equal units of space in order to graphically interpolate where the 92 foot mark is. This time, since we know we'll need 35 units, we'll use the 30 to one side of our engineer scale. Now, as you can see, since the scale is standardized to measure 30 units over 1 inch of space, we're 5 units short. This isn't a problem, however, as all we'll have to do is anchor the zero point of the scale to the upper corner of the grid and slowly pivot until we expand the amount of units to 35. The more we pivot the scale, the more the amount of units over 1 inch increases over the diagonal line we create. This may seem odd, but since we're only interested in the amount of equally spaced units that fit within our allocated space, whether the scale rests flush along the line or at an angle doesn't matter, providing we keep the zero mark aligned with the corner elevation point we're measuring from. With 35 units of space now available to us, we just need to know on which one the 92 foot point rests on. To obtain this, just as before, We'll take our elevation of 92.3 feet as a starting point and subtract the desired whole number contour point from it. With 0.3 feet remaining, we'll once again move the decimal place over one space to the right and reveal the amount of units we'll need to count in order to reach our desired point of 92 feet. After connecting the dots, we have the first contour line of 92 feet revealed in the far corner of our grid. With our one foot contour interval, we'll move on to find our next contour line downhill of it at 91 feet. The process for this is no different than before, and since we're already set up on the vertical line of this grid with 35 units of space in place, we'll go through the process once again.
With the 92 foot contour line in place and one point of the 91 foot line in place vertically, this would be a good time to pause the video to see if you can establish the amount of equally spaced units on the horizontal for the same 91 foot point using the next two elevation measurements paired up in our grid. Descending from 91.5 feet to 89.8 feet, we subtract the higher elevation by the lower and produce the remaining 1.7 feet. After moving the decimal over one space to the right, we see that we'll need 17 units of space marked out on our line. Given that we need these 17 units, take a moment now to pause the video and think about what scale you would use and how you might angle it to accomplish this. As you can see, I have chosen to use the 10 to 1 side of our engineer scale. Since this scale is set to measure 10 units per inch, in order to expand the amount of units, I have angled it till I reach the needed 17 units established earlier. With 17 units now in place on the sheet, pause the video one last time to see if you can figure out on which unit the 91 foot contour point will reside. Starting with the closest elevation to our desired contour point of 91 feet, we subtract that 91 feet from the elevation of 91.5 feet. With 0.5 feet remaining, we move our decimal point over one place to the right and discover that 5 units over from 91.5 feet rests our contour point of 91 feet. That being done, I use a T-square to line up the scale measurement and transfer it down to the line. Now, if you chose to come at this from the other direction, counting up from 89.8 feet instead, that is also correct. In this case, the order of the math is reversed so that the desired contour point of 91 feet is subtracted by the elevation of 89.8 feet. This results in a remaining 1.2 feet which converts to 12 units after moving the decimal over one space to the right. Counting 12 units up from 89.8 feet, you then arrive at the same location for the 91 foot contour point. Now, before connecting the two 91 foot contour points, there is still one more point to obtain, the vertical one in between. So we'll just go ahead and fast forward and plot that point so that we can now connect our second contour line. There's still a fair amount of lines to go to complete this contour map, and that will be your assignment. As you go through, feel free to repeat the order we went through, revealing one contour line at a time, or systematically go through grid line by grid line, horizontal then vertical, until the points gradually reveal themselves. If you come across a contour point you're struggling to place, don't get too hung up on it. Instead, move on to another line and see if the surrounding points unveil an answer to your question. The process could definitely be a tedious one, so we recommend taking periodic breaks until the puzzle of our contour map reveals itself. We'll present the answer to this puzzle in a follow-up video. So, till then.